All right, everyone, here we go. Monday, the 11th of December. Uh, we've got Ball Cap Bible Study going on today, and I'm rocking the uh, Master's Voice uh, Ball Cap. Master's Voice is a great gospel group that uh, everybody loves. Uh, I'd go look them up on YouTube if you haven't uh, heard of them. Uh, if you need a great program for your church, for your group, uh, and they like Southern Gospel, these guys, whoo, one of the best bass singers you'll you'll hear in America, and they are, they're so good. We're having them back in July. So, um, if you uh, get these videos and you're here in Oklahoma, come see them in July with us. Uh, and then if you need uh, uh, somebody to perform at your church or group, they are really really good. Uh, another really really good person is uh, Dennis Swanberg. We're going to have him tomorrow. Uh, for my South Carolina friends and others, if you've never seen or heard Dennis Swanberg, he's uh, an encouragement pastor, um, loves to make people laugh. I've got um, what I call coffee nose when the coffee seeps up and gets in me, it makes me a little, a little drippy. But anyway, uh, Dennis Swanberg, go to YouTube and look him up. He is so funny. And, uh, but yet he's Dr. Dennis Swanberg. I mean, he's He's the real deal. He knows the Bible. He's been a pastor, um, led churches, been been a shepherd and under shepherd, and and uh, knows uh, what is. But he loves uh, senior adults, and and uh, he just has so many stories and just a uh, a different take on life. You know, um, I got to speak with him on the phone yesterday, and and we were just laughing and laughing and making each other laugh, and so it was it was good. Okay. Uh, we are on the last letter uh, to the last of the seven churches, which would make it the seventh letter. And we're going to talk about something today that uh, I think affects us in this country. Um, you know, I really believe that Satan uses prosperity against us because you people tend to get to a point where they have so much, uh, they don't think they need God. It's the it's the poor and the desperate, right? There's no atheist in a foxhole. So uh, those are the people that are in constant prayer and turning to God. Uh, you know, it, when, when you're in the hospital or you get that um, really bad news from the doctor or whatever, that's when you hit your knees and become a prayer warrior. But I would suggest, um, like, like Granny, many of you know her as Aunt Penny, uh, prayer warrior of the finest sense, and um, she doesn't let anything get between her and and that and, and talking to God. So uh, let's look at what the the letter to the church in Laodicea. And for those of you that have been tracking the eras or the times or the generations uh, that some scholars think the letters also represent, and let, let me just say this about about God real quick. Um, you know, th there are certain doctrines that are just locked down and that's who God is. That's how he is. He, he shows us his character and his, his nature, but, um, sometimes God can do more than one thing at a time. I mean, he can all the time, but sometimes he chooses to do more than one thing at a time to give more than one message. Like a message would be for a people in their day and age, two, three, five thousand 5,000 years ago. But it also resonates today uh, because God resides outside of time. Um, so I, I would say, you know, open your mind. I don't know where I stand on the eras thing. I'll be honest with you. Um, I can see it when it's explained. So it's again, this is like going to um, Baskin Robbins and asking for a little sample of a flavor and then maybe thinking you want more. These are not deep dive theological um, you know, lessons in these videos, but sometimes we do go a little bit deep. Um, the, the concept of the letters to the churches being letters to different eras of mankind um, might seem a little foreign or a little, little too hard to wrap your brain around. Don't worry about it. Just uh, take it as, it as it comes off of the page for you. Uh, but I hope you can turn to your Bible to uh, the, so if, if, if in fact, this is both letters to churches, which we know it is, and 
letters describing eras in history, then this would be the last era. And but it what's kind of scary if that is true, it sure seems like that's where we are today. So here we go. To the angel in the church at Laodicea, right? Okay, so we know we know the angel is the messenger, um, uh, the stars that that he held in his hand, um, <clears throat> the pastor, the preacher, whatever you want to call him. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the originator of God's creation. Well, we know that's God, that's Jesus. Uh, you know, John tells us in his gospel. Uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among men. There wasn't anything that was created that he didn't create. He was there at creation. Um, we could, we could do a deep dive. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll look at creation uh, next time after this. Um, so again, I know your deeds that should cause us to pump the brakes personally. Um, I know your deeds. Uh, God knows you can't, you know, hide anything from the Lord um, and thank the Lord. He's very merciful and forgiving, especially in my case. Okay. I know your deeds. You're neither hot nor cold. Now, um, when he says "I how I wish you were one or the other, uh, you know, some people think you're hot, you're on fire for God, you're doing all this stuff and you're cold, you're doing nothing at all. What I've studied, what I've read, uh, by other scholars. I mean, I don't know this personally, but um, most folks land in the um, general area of Laodicea was kind of a, you know, hot springs, Arkansas kind of deal uh, uh, where you would go for healing springs um, and they had baths and they had springs and you know, was, now the hot springs were, were, you know, I mean, you you think of that as getting in and feeling good, like a like a sauna or a hot tub, but they also had cold springs. And, you know, cold is refreshing. Cold is invigorating. If, if, you, if you've ever done the deal where you you get in a hot tub for a while and then you'll jump in a cold uh, body of water, you're like, ooh, but man, just, mm, you, it's like, it like opens every pore and then slams them shut. So um, he would rather you be a hot, warm healing spring or a cold blast of, um, you know, wake up, um, kind of spring. Um, I wish you were one or the other. Now here's the deal because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. Think about that. You're, you're lukewarm. I mean, who wants a lukewarm glass of water? Yeah. Who, you know, I want, I want hot coffee or I want a cold, uh, glass of tea. Uh, on ice or a lot hot tea, you know, either one, they're both good. Um, but because you are lukewarm. So think about that. How do you ap apply lukewarm to your, to your own heart? Because you're ambivalent, because you're apathetic, because you're, um, you know, only care about your stuff because, you know, I don't know what, however lukewarm fits for you, um, for our church, for this nation, because you don't give a rip because you're neither hot nor cold, I'm about to vomit you out of my mouth. Now, how would we say that today? Because, because you're not a hot cup of coffee and because you're not a cold glass of sweet tea, because you're lukewarm, you make me sick. That's, I mean, there's a lot of things I wanna hear from the Lord. That's not one of them. You make me sick. It is not something I want to hear from the Lord. And, you know, which means we shouldn't strive to be lukewarm. Um, lukewarm, I would suggest, would also be somebody who is just a spectator, who goes for the show to church, who, you know, the person that doesn't tithe, that, you know, maybe comes to the dinners but doesn't bring anything, who, who just said, who doesn't apply their spiritual gifts, who doesn't serve, who doesn't care about other people, who, you know, always gets the aisle seat and won't move over, who always gets this parking spot and is mad when somebody else has got there first. I mean, you know what lukewarm is. Um, I know what it is for me. Um, you know, the, I'm the guy that feels guilty because I, I won't give the, the bum on the corner a dollar. 
but you can't because you're just enabling them. That's a whole nother story. I just chased a rabbit. Sorry. But, but you know what lukewarm is for you personally, for your church, for your friends, for uh, people in general. Okay. Now here's where um, he gets them. And it really is, I mean, it's a right in, in the heart of American churches. You say, I am rich. I have grown wealthy and need nothing. And that's how it feels when people are wealthy. Um, you know, you kind of that Deuteronomy 8, you know, there's a big warning. Don't look around and say, hey, look what I did. Look what was, I made all this wealth. That's not true. Um, I know your deeds. You're neither hot nor cold. I uh, already read that. Sorry. You say I'm rich and I've grown wealthy and need nothing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Oh, that's not good. And and think about this. Compared to God's wealth, we are poor and pitiful. And to think highly of ourselves makes us pretty wretched. Um, you know, we're not to think more highly of ourselves than others, are we? How about um, my dad has a saying. No one's better than anyone else. They're just better off. Um, so poor, blind, naked. blind, what are we blind to? Well, typically we become blind to the needs of others. We got ours, you know, if you guys would just work harder, you could get there too. I mean, that's a horrible attitude. Um, you know, we're to, we're to help each other. We're, we're the body of Christ. We're all together. Um, he says, and, and, and here's what's interesting. Um, you know, these letters, he, he, um, condemns, but then he also, you know, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He says, good job. Uh, so he says, I counsel you to buy, but here you don't really hear that except at the very end, there's a little, there's still a little sliver of hope and you'll, you'll see that. He says, uh, I counsel you, I encourage you. I, if I were you, I would do this. I counsel you to buy from me, God gold refined by fire so that you may become rich white garments by white garments so that you may be clothed in your shameful nakedness not exposed and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see so he's he's addressing the things he said earlier he said he said you are wretched pitiful poor blind and naked and so he says buy the gold for me that's been refined by fire so you won't be Poor in the spiritual sense, um, but get salve from me for your eyes, so you won't be blind. Um, and then buy garments may, white, pure. What does that mean? That's salvation, right? Um, so that you may be clothed um, and your shameful nakedness not exposed. Uh, so, you know what? What does that mean? Well, we're all sinners saved by grace. So, uh, you know what? Look, I know you because I know me. And you've got something deep inside you don't want exposed. And you need to get that right with God. Um, everybody does. For all of sin fallen short of the glory of God. So there's none worthy, not one. So here's, here's so there's hope. He's saying, I, I counsel you to, you know, understand where your worth comes from. And it's not from your possessions. It's not from what the world thinks of you. Our worth, our value, our wealth indicator, you know, our our um, our net worth, so to speak, comes from the fact that God loved you enough to send His Son to die for you. He thinks highly of you. That's what makes you worthy and valuable, not how much is in the bank. Okay, so here's here's so besides the hope that you can buy gold refined by fire. You can get the garments to cover your nakedness. You can get the salve to, uh, from God, God's salve to make your eyes, uh, where they can see. Listen to what he says. Those, he says, those I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, there's an implied you here. Be earnest and repent. Those I, look, it's it's kind of like a parent lecturing a kid. We only do it because we love them. They don't like to hear it. They tune us out. After about 10 seconds, they hear Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 wah. But those I love, those the Lord loves, Jesus, uh, 
God loves you, has a plan for your life. He rebukes uh, or, or chastens and, and disciplines. He, it, we want him to get onto us. You don't want God to let you, you know, go your own way. Fleetwood Mac was not right. You cannot go your own way. There's, there's two ways to do things, God's way and the wrong way. Um, those I love, are, you want to be rebuked by God. You want to be disciplined by God because that's part of the relationship dynamic. Therefore, be earnest and repent. So, so there's still hope. There's still opportunity. So here he goes, finishes up. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Doesn't this sound familiar? If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. To the one who overcomes, I will grant the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoo! That's got to give you goosebumps. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Look, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. He's like, hey, I'm on the porch. Um, it's interesting. We have a sign coming into our neighborhood that says no soliciting. You want Jesus out there knocking on doors. You know, it's kind of like a campaign. I mean, there, there, is, there is a battle going on. There's a campaign being waged between good and evil. And you want Jesus knocking on doors, asking people uh, to vote for him. You know, how do we do that? By by prayer, by by people repenting, by accepting him as Lord and Savior, on and on and on. All the things, reading the Bible, uh, you know, watching these videos, as goofy as they are sometimes, but uh, you want Jesus out there knocking on. And, and you know what? You want to canvas a neighborhood with him. Um, if, if Jesus uh, isn't too good to go knock on a door, why should I be? So don't don't let people pass by you. Don't be don't be lukewarm about about who's around you. Um, be that hot, uh, relaxing sauna hot tub, or be that cold, invigorating, uh, cool drink of water. But don't be lukewarm, um, because uh, we, you don't want God to say you make me sick. So. Do your best. Repent, because uh, God knows your deeds. Um, doing nothing is not an option. All right, that's it. Love you. See you later. Bye.